Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a horror film named A Nightmare on Elm Street, Part 4, The Dream Master. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. In the previous movie, the nightmare killer Freddy finally got rid of his favorite target Nancy, and he was seemingly purified. However, the girl named Chris, who was gifted with the power to pull others into her nightmares, cannot enjoy her peaceful life for long before she experiences another nightmare. This time, she dreams of the old house where Freddy lived before his death. A little girl is drawing the house on the ground outside the front door and tells Chris that Freddy is not home. Soon after, Chris is taken inside the house. In the dream, she witnesses various metaphors and illusions, which frightens her greatly. In her fear, she pulls the other two survivors from the previous movie, Lucky Guy and Timid Boy, into her dream. The three of them are in the boiler room of the dream, but they don't find Freddy. Eventually, they discover that Lucky Guy's dog has also been pulled into the dream by Chris. The dog bites Chris's arm, and the three of them wake up in shock. Upon waking, Lucky Guy finds blood in his dog's mouth, and Chris discovers bite marks on her arm. The next day, the three meet at school, and Lucky Guy and Timid Boy complain that Chris's anxiety has dragged them into her dream. They tell her not to be so suspicious and paranoid in the future, or else they might accidentally wake Freddy up. Their conversation ends on a sour note. Chris has a lively boyfriend named Rick, and Rick's sister named Alice, who often shares her dream experiences with Chris. Chris's other friends include an asthmatic girl with glasses, and an athletic girl who hates insects. Life seems peaceful, but unbeknownst to Chris, Freddy has returned and is plotting revenge on them. The first victim is Lucky Guy, not lucky enough this time. In his dream at night, he is pulled into a junkyard, where Freddy's remains are buried and witnesses Freddy's rebirth. Afterward, Freddy uses his powers to trap Lucky Guy in the dream. Realizing he has no hope of escape, Lucky Guy issues a final warning. The second victim is Timid Boy. Freddy uses the same trick as last time, causing him to have another erotic dream. He thinks he can have some hormone yoga with a flirty girl, but the girl suddenly turns into Freddy. The waterbed turns into a pool, causing him to drown. The next day, Chris arrives at school and finds that Lucky Guy and Timid Boy are gone. She panics, knowing that Freddy has returned. Rick comforts her using his words, but not muscles, but she accidentally knocks herself unconscious. In her unconscious state, she meets Freddy, who is disguised as a female doctor. Fortunately, the school nurse revives her just in time to avoid danger. Afterward, Chris brings Rick, Alice, and Alice's boyfriend Jordan to Freddy's old house to search for clues, hoping to find a way to end their nightmares once and for all. Before they can enter, Chris encounters her mother and is forcibly taken home. Chris soon finds herself feeling drowsy as her mother has slipped her sleeping pills. The mother believes that Chris is acting out in teenage rebellion, pretending to be crazy and not sleeping to attract attention. Due to the sleeping pills, Chris enters the nightmare very soon. In her dream, Chris finds herself on a sunny beach. However, Freddy's claws emerge from the ground and chase her after her smell. The sand starts to sink and Freddy appears to flex his demonic figure, pushing her into the boiler room. Freddy taunts her with words and threatens that she can call more people to help herself. Chris knows that Freddy hasn't pulled anyone other than the Elm Street descendants into their dreams, but in her desperation, she can't control her powers and accidentally pulls Alice into the nightmare. In the end, Chris can't escape Freddy's grasp and is pushed into the furnace. Before she dies, she transfers her dream-pulling ability to Alice and helps her escape. But now, Alice has become Freddy's target. When Alice wakes up, she immediately takes her brother to Chris's house, only to find a burned corpse and flames. Meanwhile, her close friends begin to encounter misfortune, one after another. The first victim is Alice's friend, the asthmatic girl. She is answering questions in class, when suddenly words appear on the paper and the pen drips blood. Freddy crawls out of the exam paper. As the asthmatic girl has asthma, Freddy sucks the breath and hormones out of her in a French-style kiss in the nightmare. In reality, the girl has an asthma attack, and even using her inhaler doesn't save her shitty life. Next to be killed is Alice's brother and Chris's boyfriend, Rick. Rick is a fan of ninja culture, so Freddy prepares a Japanese-style dream scenario. Due to his usual practice, Rick manages to kick the invisible Freddy. However, just as he is celebrating, the bladed glove suddenly moves and kills him. With her friends and loved ones dying one by one, Alice is deeply depressed. 
Her father, grieving over his son's death, becomes overprotective of her and doesn't allow her to leave the house. Depressed, Alice sneaks out to the movie theater, hoping that watching a Daniel C.C. horror movie will help improve her mood. However, strange things start happening as she gets pulled into the screen, finding herself in the dream world. Alice ends up at the pizzeria where she works, only to see an older version of herself still working as a waitress amidst a scene of decay. Freddy appears to flex his demonic figure again and explains his plan to Alice. Originally, his killing spree was supposed to end after Chris's death as she was the last descendant of the people on Elm Street. But before she died, Chris transferred part of her special power to Alice, thus connecting her to Freddy, causing the nightmare killer to be able to enter and exit her dreams freely. Freddy reveals that he didn't kill Alice because people instinctively think of their loved ones when in danger. So by constantly scaring Alice in her dreams, she will unwittingly pull more people into her nightmares. Unknowingly, Alice becomes Freddy's servant, serving him one delicious soul pizza after another. Upon hearing Freddy's explanation, Alice becomes worried about her friend and subconsciously pulls her friend, the athletic girl, into the dream. Cunning Freddy then drives Alice out of the nightmare. Awake, Alice immediately finds her boyfriend, Jordan, and drives to the athletic girl's house to save her. Unfortunately, Freddy has already succeeded in killing her, even though she's good at running. Since the girl fears bugs, Freddy transforms her body, bit by bit, into a cockroach. After some teasing, he locks the cockroach-transformed girl in a roach motel and crushes her. Freddy then uses illusions to make the coming Alice and Jordan trapped in a dimension, appearing in the middle of the road but with no way out. Alice steps on the gas, trying to run over Freddy, but they end up in a car accident instead. Alice suffers minor injuries, while Jordan is rushed to the hospital for surgery due to damaged organs. However, once he's sedated, he'll fall asleep and fall into Freddy's grasp. To protect her boyfriend, Alice decides to face Freddy directly. She discovers she can inherit the abilities of her deceased friends. So she returns home, arms herself with the mementos of her friends, Rick's headband, the bug repellent made by the asthmatic girl, and the wrist guard given by the athletic girl. She prepares to face Freddy, bringing these bonds and abilities into a battle to the death. She then takes sleeping pills to enter the dream world and protect her boyfriend. In the nightmare, Jordan opens his eyes to see Freddy, but Alice arrives just in time to help him escape. The two of them tumble and fall in a seemingly barrel-like corridor, landing on the ground. Jordan notices he's bleeding from his chest, and the doctors in the operating room see it too. They wake Jordan from anesthesia, while Alice is left alone in the dream world's church. Alice somersaults in front of Freddy, punching and kicking his smelly parts, but he remains unharmed and laughs like a psycho. By now, Freddy has absorbed too many souls and fears from his victims, making him grow stronger. So those attacks don't work on him at all. At this moment, Alice gets a clue from a nursery rhyme, sung by the souls of the children. Evil will see itself, and it will die. So Alice uses a broken mirror to reflect Freddy's image, and, in an instant, the trapped souls within him start to retaliate. They crawl out of Freddy's body, causing him to explode and be defeated once again. The trapped souls of the victims thank Alice, before ascending to heaven to meet Jesus. In the end, the street finally returns to peace. Alice and a recovered Jordan make a wish by tossing coins into the hospital pool. For a moment, Alice sees Freddy's reflection, but she is no longer afraid of the nightmare killer. Calmly, she begins her new life and embraces her honey days with her boyfriend. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.